Welcome to Belvedere College and thank you for choosing Belvedere College. Uh, it's a Catholic Jesuit school, so it has a unique charism in terms of how our education is provided. I'd ask that in conjunction with looking at all the information that you'll be provided on this presentation, that you download uh, the parent handbook as well, because most of the questions you have will be answered in that question. Uh, you can also see on our website, uh, there's a fortnightly newsletter and it's packed full of information and it exhibits many of the achievements of the students in the college. So through those things, you'll get a huge amount of information about us. We look forward to meeting you in person. The feedback from this presentation previously was incredibly positive. It allows you and your son or your sons to sit and watch the presentation and to discuss it and to look at the options that are available to you. Uh, and then obviously it also saves in terms of coming into the college. We're a green school and we try and minimise the impact we have on the environment as much as possible. So the transition from primary school to secondary school is a big transition. I'd say to the, all the students who are in sixth class, enjoy the last year. It's a wonderful experience to be the most senior in the college in, in your schools and then look forward to joining us. We have an extensive induction program, so you will be made feel very welcome uh, and you will enjoy what we have to offer in terms of our co-curricular because we call it co-curricular. Uh, it's the extracurricular that you probably uh, have some understanding of from looking at our website, but we believe that a great deal of learning happens both within and outside the class and our staff are involved in a very extensive program of co-curricular. As I said, we look forward to seeing you and I'd say to you about subject choices, don't worry about them. There's more than enough information uh, being provided to you and it's not a matter of life and death. You will get a huge opportunity when you come to the college to actually experience those subjects. And in some cases, people change subjects, but by and large, people don't. They stay with the subjects that they have. After this, there are a couple of people who will be talking to you and uh, the first is Mr. Paul Bryce and he's one of the deputy principals. After that, Mr. Tom Doyle is another deputy principal. He'll talk to you. Then Miss Angela Kern is a guidance counsellor uh, in the college and she will explain some of the subject options to you. And finally, Mr. Stephen Carey, who is an assistant principal, and he will also give you some information on it. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a uh, uh, it's something to look forward to when you come to the college. It is a really brilliant experience in secondary school. I can say that both as a member of staff here watching my colleagues and also as a parent of two former boys who went through the college. So now I'll hand you over to Mr. Paul Bryce. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Welcome and good evening. I, I'm going to talk very briefly to you about what to expect in the first few uh, days and weeks at Belvedere College. And we really look forward to welcoming you then and accompanying you on your journey over the next six years with us. You will be Old Belvedereans 2029, so OB29. It might seem like a long way away now, but it will fly in. When you arrive in, in August, you will come into a, a college that is based on developing the whole person. We talk about cura personalis, care of the person. So the child is at the center of all that we do. We have a very, very strong pastoral system and it's the core of our college. You will, when you arrive, have a form group. 27 other boys will be in the class with you and you'll remain in that class for six years. You'll meet those boys every morning. You'll make lifelong uh, friendships. You will celebrate successes and overcome challenges together. You'll have a form tutor who will hopefully be with you for si those six years who will work with you, will help you, will um, give you advice and support, and we will be, will be your advocate. We'll be the person you go to in the college, the person who knows you the best. They will support you as a young man, and as parents, they will be your point of contact. They'll get to know your son really well. We stay in contact with our form classes the rest of our lives. My left, I left here 20 years ago, and my form class was Elmer. But we have six different forms six different forms and you'll be put into one. Also, as part of our pastoral system, you'll have a head of year each year. So we've got six heads of year. The head of year currently for elements, that's what we call first year in Belvedere College, is Miss Jenny Burke. You'll have a link deputy principal. At the moment, I'm the link deputy principal for first, second and third years. And Mr. Doyle, who comes after me, is the link deputy for fourth, fifth and sixth year.
when you arrive into the college, um, the first place you will go is the college chapel, is where your journey with us will begin and end. It is the heart of our college. This morning we had mass and we had a, over 150 people in there, people from different schools, parents, students, teachers, and it's a very special place for all of us in Belvedere. Your first week here on college site will be your induction week, and that takes place the week before we start in August. At that day, at that week, you will meet your new uh, peer group, first year elements 2023, your form tutor, your year head, and really importantly, you'll meet your class prefects. Class prefects are sixth years who are chosen by their, their peers, teachers, and there's about 50 in the year group. And you will have two that will be assigned to you for the whole year. Two young men, exceptional young men, who will work with you and also be someone who you can go to, a point of contact about when to go, where to go for training or what do I do if. They'll get to know your sons really well and for young men, you become very close to them through the year. In that week, we will be down on Distillery Road. It's one of our rugby grounds. We will do some team uh, building games. You'll get to know all these different people, but you'll also be in the college. We will give you your locker. We will show you where you sit in your classroom. So on that first day of school, okay, at the end of that week, you will know where you're going. You'll have a, had a tour. You'll be very familiar with the whole site. The week before induction week is also something um, that we want to talk about. That's Camp Belleville. That's a rugby camp. It was run by some of the school uh, school teachers, and you'll get some information on that later in the year. And that's where the majority of first year go just to do some games, learn a bit of rugby, um, and get to know everyone just a week before we come in. We find it's a really good way to settle in. I suppose Mr. Doyle's going to come after me now and, and now in a second and talk about uh, the Magister more. But before we get on to that, I just want to talk about what Belvedere has to offer outside of the classroom. Because we are excellent in our academics. We do have some students, many students, who go off to do whatever career they want to do and succeed very highly, but it's not all that we are about. We excel in so many areas in the college. And we really, as Mr Foley talked about co-curricular, we really value that relationship, those relationships that are made outside the classroom. In particular, with your peers, with kids from other year groups, but also with teachers. Building those relationships that are inside the classroom we work really, really well together. We have um, music, choir, trad group, chamber orchestra, to name just a few. We have shows at Wesley that we go and compete at. We have the carol service. We have a phenomenal drama department that puts on five, six, eight shows a year. Okay, and the first one will be starting in September for first and second years. Okay, we have six teams of rugby. Okay, six teams of rugby in first year alone. I coach, um, I coach uh, the, the E and F teams this year. We have 121 boys that turn up regularly on a Saturday morning and Wednesday afternoon. We have trips and, trips and exchanges all over the world to China, Austria, the US. We have a large campus ministry team that run retreats for every single child in the college every year. Okay, we also have trips like Lourdes and Taze and trips to Calcutta. We have the largest um, Vincent de Paul Society in the whole country. Okay, with over 400 boys signed up, they run things like the soup run. Um, they go out and do visitations to elders in the area. They are very involved in the sleep at every Christmas. We have many ways for you to develop your leadership skills, whether it be as class captain voted by your class, whether it be in the Green Skills Committee uh, or on the sports pitch. We have Science Buzz, which is very popular, and we have a Climate Action Group and a Green Schools Committee. I talked about that. Go down to the Dáil every Friday for the Fridays for Future. That's only a small proportion of what we do. We have other things like debating and many other activities that you can get involved in. So over the next few months, as you read the, uh, the college newsletter, which goes out every two weeks on our social media feeds, have a look and see what you would like to get involved in. We're really looking forward to you coming in and getting involved in something new. Finally, for me, for the moment, I talked about cure personalists and the care for the whole child to start. That's not just in the classroom. OK, we get involved. We get to know each other. My first day back here after 16 years away, the school captain stood up in front of the, the incoming elements four years ago. And he said, if you come to school eight, at 840 every day and leave at 335 every day, you're missing out on the greatest opportunity. So there's lots of you to get involved in. I'll now pass on to Mr. Doyle.
Thank you, Mr. Bryce. I'm going to speak uh, to you about uh, three different things. I'm going to speak to you about uh, Magis, uh, which is one of our um, four values. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about academic life up to the, um, the junior cert and also a little bit about the new uh, junior cycle or the junior cycle. So what is Magis? Uh, Magis means uh, striving to live out your unique potential. It's it's one of the four values here in the college. So our vision, mission and values, along with community being a community of welcome, uh, justice, where we we talk about the students uh, being people of integrity. And of course, our Jesuit tradition, which uh, ties in with Cura Personalis, which Mr. Bright uh, spoke about earlier on. Uh, Cura Personalis is uh, means care of the, the person. So Mr. Bright spoke a lot there about and make the most of all the opportunities and offer in the college. We also expect the same in the classroom. And of course, this is helped by uh, we have a very large staff, a uh, very broad uh, curriculum uh, amongst the staff. There's a huge level of col uh, collaboration, working together and um, the staff are be heavily involved in peer observation, uh, sharing best practice. And I suppose all of this helps uh, the boys or the students maximize their ability in the classroom. Obviously a key component and we say this um, throughout all uh, six years and every September, and October, um, we, uh, we have a huge focus on study skills. We have something called a pastoral calendar with five different components to the year and um, uh, uh, we start every year uh, with study skills. Uh, homework, obviously, uh, what is homework? It's it, it's to reinforce what's happening in the classroom. It's it's revision, it could be written, um, but there will be a lot of homework and uh, the teachers will be linking in with the students and the form tutors as well. We'll be talking to them about this and the importance of having a good routine in relation to uh, homework. Running alongside and supporting students along with uh, study skills every September and October um, is uh, after school study, which is available to every year group. And it takes place in our in our library or our learning resource center. And that's from 345 to 515. And you find students of all different years in there after uh, school. Um, um, Mr. Bryce spoke about uh, when the students come into school in first year and they're set up in their classrooms um, and, and, and there's lots of organization with, 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 the, with the seating, with lockers. They're also set up on academic teams and this would be to be a teams for every year group. And there'll also be a teams for every class. So there'll probably be teams as well. There's academic or there's teams or Microsoft teams for the different co-curricular groups. And this is a way of the teachers communicating with the boys and setting work and reinforcing what's covered in the classroom. Um, there'll be assemblies for uh, all year groups in August, September. There's also a uh, return to school meetings for the parents and whether it's in the student assemblies or whether it's in the meetings for the parents. One of the things we we put a huge emphasis on is the journal and uh, the school journal. Uh, we're very proud of it. Um, it's it, it's been developed year in, year out. I suppose the student council, the staff, the parents feedback in making it the best resource it can be for the students and it contains uh, information. Obviously, you know, uh, code of behavior, anti bullying policy, but there'll also be literacy maths, there'll be IT tips. Um, there will be sections where the students will have to complete certain pages at different parts of the year in relation to academic tracking and monitoring and following up and also target setting. And I suppose this will bring me on to the next slide, which deals with tracking and uh, monitoring. And I suppose tracking and monitoring uh, are, are key elements of allowing students to work towards their potential and magis um, and that, that idea of more uh, living out your unique potential. And what we have in the college is we have a raising uh, academic achievement plan and there's key elements to this, I suppose, and it's it's brought together over different parts of the year. And you'll see there in October, there's the um, all students will receive a grade and an effort mark. And then at Christmas and summer, obviously, there are big summative exams. There'll be house exams in in, in the O'Reilly uh, Theatre and in our sports hall. Um, different timings depending on the year and students will uh, receive a, a subject comment. They'll get a grade. They'll also have a form tutor report. And after these, I suppose, big occasions throughout the year, um, there will be a lot happening in terms of following up and tracking and monitoring and putting in interventions where where required. Uh, these interventions are, I suppose, they're drawn together by um, 
the for sorry by the year heads working alongside the, the forum shooters for the different year groups, the additional education needs department. You might have chaplains involved, uh, subject teachers as well. And also we have a, a, a very strong uh, guidance and counselling department here in the college. So um, what could these interventions be? Well, in some cases, there could be a letter home uh, acknowledging achievements. Uh, we have uh, tie ceremonies throughout the year as well. Um, or else uh, where it's required, uh, there'll be work done with, with students in terms of study skills or maybe showing them where to access resources on study clicks. And these would happen throughout uh, the year. And I like what I was saying about the journal being a very important resource, not just for the students, but also for the parents. The parents play a huge role here as well, I suppose, in circling everything off because going alongside the um, academic tracking and monitoring that happens here in the school, there's also the parent reply uh, forms and these are sent out after the summer exams and after the Christmas exams. And it's an opportunity for for parents, obviously, whilst having conversations with their students when reading through the subject comments and the form through the reports to kind of identify maybe um, how they link in with the subject teachers or the form shooters in allowing their son to achieve their potential in the college. Um, obviously, your son will be coming in in um, next uh, August, September, and he'll be coming into the junior cycle. So now I'll move on to the junior cycle. And um, I suppose it's not the new junior cycle anymore. It's, you know, it was first examined in in in, in 2014 with uh, English. So um, uh, um, um, obviously it's it's embedded um, and it's it's composed of key skills, principles. It's also uh, a, a big emphasis on statements of of learning, but these key skills and, you, and you'll see them there on the right hand side. There'll be a different emphasis, obviously, on on different skills throughout every lesson. Uh, you might have all of them in some cases happening in a lesson. And one of the things the teachers will be doing is working with the students to um, uh, helping them identify uh, and, and being able to associate the different skills with what they're um, uh, doing or undertaking in the class. So if you look at them, the idea to be literate, to be numerous, to be creative, to manage themselves, staying well, managing information, communicating and that ability to work with others. So uh, as I said, you'll find most of these key skills happening uh, in a lesson or throughout uh, a topic um, going hand in hand with these key skills would be the statements of learning and there's 24 statements of learning. Now you wouldn't cover um, all these statements of learning in a lesson, um, but as you go through them, depending on the subject um, or depending on the topic, you would be. Mr. Doyle, you've muted yourself there. Apologies, I'll just I'll just go back to the key skills. And uh, one of the key features of the uh, junior cycle is this idea of, of of key skills and allowing students to make connections between um, topics. So uh, as I was saying there in geography, which would be a subject that I would teach um, having the um, uh, ability, awareness and knowledge to live sustainably would be one of the 24 key skills. And this would be something that you would see in in science or home ec. And I in 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 in, in the junior cycle, it's this, I suppose what teachers put an emphasis on is this awareness to make connections between different subjects and also what's happening uh, outside of um, the school and the curriculum as well. Uh, in relation to the gradings for the uh, junior cycle, um, uh, your parents and maybe older siblings might be aware of um, gradings in the past. You would have had an A, a B, C and D. With the junior cycle, an A would be, I suppose, a, a distinction. A B would be higher merit. 
C would be a merit, D would be achieved. In the new junior cycle, you also are in the junior cycle. You also have um, coursework and you would have classroom based assessments. And these classroom based assessments that would happen over different parts of second year or third year, and these would be assessed and 10% of the final grading would be for these um, assessments. Um, so just just to sum up, I, I, I think we may have um, uh, I may have been muted there for a moment, so apologies if something uh, was uh, lost, but uh, I've I, I focused on the idea of magis or or, or more. I've uh, focused on uh, academic tracking and monitoring, and I've also looked at the junior cycle, which your son will be undertaking for the first his first three years here in the college. Um, thank you. I look forward to seeing your uh, son at, up at Camp Belvo and meeting him when they come through the gates of the college next uh, August. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Angela Kern and I'm here to talk to you tonight about the guidance department and how it works in Belvedere College. So just to advise that there's two guidance counselors currently working in Belvedere College. It's Angela Kern and Roshan O'Donoghue and both of us have a number of classes that we work with. We work with the students from first year onwards and um, we get to know them as part of the transition program as they transition into Belvedere College. The guidance department offers a range of different services to the students and it's an open door policy where they can pop in at any stage if they require any help. We also set up Teams accounts for the students and we link in through their year groups to, to post up information that they might need as we go through the year. We start the vocational, educational and the pastoral and the personal very young in Belvedere um, with our transition programme that we've developed. The transition programme is part of one of the strands of the guidance programme. And there are three different strands of the guidance program, the vocational guidance, the educational guidance and the social and personal. I'll bring you through exactly what they are now. Sorry, these slides aren't moving across for me. Beg your pardon, it. sorry. Sticky keyboard. OK, so starting off with the actual social and personal that's transitioning from primary to secondary school programme. This is a tailored programme that has been developed by myself and um, Miss O'Donoghue, and it's based on a number of um, years research based on transitioning from sixth class into first year in, in, in uh, Belvedere College. So it's been tailored for the students. It's tweaked every year based on feedback from the students. And what we do is we've also integrated it into the new programme of the NCGE. We have developed a programme with NCGE, which is a junior cycle guidance programme. And I'm going to bring you through some of that format now in, in a couple of minutes. But the whole idea is that we help them transition into secondary school. We mind them as they move into our actual first year classes. We help them settle in. We give them all the tools that they need. We link in with their form tutors and their year heads and we guide the students as they progress through this transition. This transition is a big transition for students and we want to ensure that they make it smoothly into Belvedere College. From an educational piece, we Mr. Do, Mr. Doyle spoke about the study skills programme. And that program kicks off in September. So the first thing that happens in that is the annual study skills week where we have the actual teachers who are state examiners talk about the different exam strategies. We have um, different teachers talk about different ways to study different subjects. I do a talk myself on how to study, how to manage yourself, how to organize your time, how to set goals, everything that is needed, motivational tips, growth mindset. We speak about all the different elements that you need when you're actually setting up a study plan. We show them how to set up a weekly study plan. We we give them everything that they need and this is run over lunchtime in September. We advertise it throughout the college, we send the information down home through the newsletter and we also put stuff up on our website just to help the student have the skills that they need to, um, to reach their academic potential. In addition to this, then we offer one to ones if they so require, if somebody is um, is needing help with the actual educational piece regarding studying and stuff like that, we will meet them on a one to one basis. We will set up weekly planners. We will help them find a method that actually suits them. In addition to that, we use the journal um, as a self review tool. And there's parts of that where we sit down with the students and we talk around what they'd like to achieve and we get them to think about how they're going to achieve that. We also use study clicks, which is a tool that all students get when they come into the school. And that is a tool that is used for past papers and information around different curriculums. But it also gives marking schemes so that the student understands exactly what's expected when they sit in the exam. So we do a lot of work around the whole study skills piece. In addition to that, the vocational piece. 
besides the actual program that we roll out, we also have lunchtime talks that all students can attend. And these talks are colleges, past alumni, parents, guardians, people who have different professions, different apprenticeships, a mix of different areas. We bring everything, everybody in so that the students can have a sense of actually what would it feel like to be in their shoes and in that particular career. Again, to inform them at an early stage and throughout their college years of exactly what is expected in that particular career and what might lead you into that. What should they be concentrating on while they're in school if they like the feel of that particular career? We also have a startup series where we link in with past alumni who have started their own companies just to give the students additional information around how to start up companies and what it's like to start off entrepreneurial and um, different uh, startup tech companies as well. And we bring them in and we interview them as well and the students get to ask questions. We also have a really good business club, science club and also the pathways lesson where we talk about vocation, we talk about careers and we talk about what might be interesting. We do start this very young to give them as much time as possible to settle in and also to get a sense of actually what might I do when I actually leave school and in addition to that to looking at subject choices because that's quite um, important when it comes to that as well. I'm just going to give you a little quick tour of what we do with the transition students just to explain exactly what happens when they arrive in. So this is the first slide of the first uh, part of the programme where we sit in the classrooms with the students and we find out how they're feeling as they, as they settle in as part of the guidance programme now that they've arrived here how does it actually feel? And then we move on to what it might be, what they might be thinking. So they may have some worries. So we talk about that in class and we explain, look, at you know, this is normal behaviour to have some worries around and some concerns. And um, it's a much longer day than they're usually used to. They're usually used to finishing up what, 20 past two and making their way home. Whereas in school, in Belvedere, you're probably doing a commute. So and they've also got co-curricular and they've loads of bags to carry and they've loads of things to remember. So we help them put a system in place to help them. For example, one of the students suggested a couple of years ago, a ski pass for their actual fob. So all those small little things that can make a huge difference, we help them and um, with those particular tools. Transitioning from primary to secondary, we talk about the goal setting, it's organisational skills. We really help them get organised as well around a zip folder system where we get them to buy zip folders and make sure that they put all their books into the separate ones for each of the subjects. It just really helps them get organised and all they have to do is take that particular zip folder out of the locker and they're off to the class. It actually speeds up their time as well and it gives them more time to actually have chats with their friends. School supports are in place. We explain exactly who's there when you need them and we talk around that. We get them to fill in their journal of all the people's names that they might need. We explain what will happen over the school year because sometimes that's daunting. They don't even know what's going to happen over the year. But we also do first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year and sixth year. So we give them a full overview exactly what's going to happen over the course of their time in the school. We discuss their values and we discuss their pathways as in different careers and different places that they might um, go after school. Subject choice. So this is obviously quite important as well. As I said, it links into different things down the line. And um, it's really important that they review the subjects that they're thinking of taking. Now, Careers Portal has a fantastic section on it. So that's careersportal.ie. They have a fantastic section which outlines all the different subjects and it shows you exactly what the curriculum is, what the course overview, what the content is, so they know exactly what they're taking on when they take that particular subject. It also has past papers if you go into study click so they can have a look at the past papers for that particular subject, but they also look and explore the actual subject. In addition to that, the subject choice videos up on our website where they can sit up and watch those as well. And if they look at those three elements, it'll give them a really good sense of exactly what they might choose. The key thing to be um, looking at when you're choosing subjects is, is there an interest? You have to have an interest. So you need to discuss that. You need to look at the reports as well, to look at strengths and the results and the content, as I said. In addition to that, you need to sit back and reflect so you can do a pros and cons of exactly the reasons why you would choose this subject over that particular subject. Then you decide. So you have that time to sit back and have a look around and have a feel for that subject. Maybe talk to other students and if possible, if you can get your hands on some junior cert books or junior cycle books, that'd be excellent as well. And also for them to talk to their peers as well that have taken subjects already. So just to be advised, like the whole idea in Belvedere College is that people are motivated and that they actually they're choosing subjects that they actually are interested in. And in addition to that, they must take a modern language and a science. It's mandatory in Belvedere College um, and, and modern language and lab science may be required down the line as an essential subject when it comes to even um, six year as they leave school for some courses. Lastly, nearly there, sorry. 
resources to help with the subject choice. As I stated already, Careers Portal is an excellent tool and should be used. The other tool that's quite helpful as well is a tool called qualifax.ie. That's up on the slide there. And um, you can take a picture of that. And that's really helpful when you go into students, into useful tools and down to a little tool called the minimum requirement tool. It's an excellent way to look at different subjects. What it does is it tells you, for example, whether that subject might be needed down the line in a particular course if you're applying to the CAO. As I said earlier, the Junior Cert books and the Junior Cycle books are really helpful for students. And also our website, our guidance website has the videos um, that you can actually go and have a look at. Currently, the guidance website is under TY and um, under curriculum and TY. You will find all the details there. Thank you for your time this evening. I'm going to hand you over now to Mr Kerry, who's going to talk about subject options. Good evening, everybody. My name is Stephen Carey, and I'm responsible for timetable scheduling and subject choice um, in the college. I'll be talking to you this evening about the subject information form uh, that you would have received with this video. There would have been a link with the video um, that you would have received today, <clears throat> but the form will only go live tomorrow morning as we felt it was important for you to watch the video ahead of filling in the form. If looking at the form, you have further questions, you can contact Mr. Foley's secretary, uh, Ms. Yvonne O'Brien, uh, or myself directly via email. To, to point out, apologies, uh, just to point out, the deadline for that form, as written and highlighted in yellow there, is 12 noon on Wednesday, the 22nd of February 2023. And please adhere to that deadline. Just a little tip as well, in advance of filling in the form, you will need your son's primary school roll number and you will also need his PPS number. So as the form moves on, a lot of it is self-explanatory. It will begin, it will start with some personal information. Then there'll be information that we need from the, um, for the Department of Education to pass on. And then we also ask about your son's medical history. Moving on with the form, and um, we move into the, the area of subject choice, and this is something you'll probably give uh, more thought and more discussion to um, compared to the other the other aspects of it. Your son will study a number of subjects and um, all students will study a number of subjects as mandatory subjects. So unless exempt, he will study Irish, he'll study English and mathematics. Science is a compulsory subject in the junior years, as is history and geography. They will also then have PE, uh, religious education, SBHE, which is social health and personal education, and CSPE, civic, social and political education. And um, these will all be timetables throughout the various weeks. The next section we're going to look at um, is to do with oh, apologies, sorry, I'll go back. Um, when it comes to picking the subjects, which is on the next page, if it happens that a subject is over prescribed, we will apply random selection. Also, if there are too few looking to do a subject, the subject will be deemed un inviolable or unviable um, and we may not be able to run the class. If something like this does happen, we will be in contact with you well before September to let you know. When it comes to the random selection for oversubscribed um, courses, it, only those that are in by the closing date will enter that random selection process. We then come to a modern foreign language, which may well be new for a lot of your sons, but they will study at least one, uh, but everyone will study one modern foreign language. And the three that we offer are French, German and Spanish. When it comes to this, there are three questions. You can see just number 32 there on the slide, but 32, 33 and 34 will ask you for your first, your second and your third option. So obviously your first preference uh, goes down as number one and then fill in the other two accordingly. The next piece is comes to the, the subject and uh, the optional subjects. Um, so bear in mind, we've already seen now 11 subjects that they'll do. Uh, this will make 12 and 13 of 14. Um, and he will choose two of these subjects and he will continue to study these for the first four years before 
we meet again and we talk about selecting fifth year subjects and leaving search subjects. So we're just going to go down through them um, a little bit and again accompanying this and on the website as Ms Curran has pointed out there's lots of information available about um, the various different reasons why people may pick the subjects. Um, we have a thriving art department and uh, there's three teachers in our art department and three um, art rooms uh, all state of the art recently refurbished uh, art rooms in the, in the attic of one of the older parts of the building. Um, but an absolutely thriving um, uh, art department and, and with a lot of um, ventures into co-curricular activity there. Business studies is, remains one of our most more popular uh, subjects um, and it covers all three disciplines of business acumen, accounting and economics. Classics or classical studies. It's very much at the root of Jesuit education and the foundation of Jesuit education. And there are two options to study classical studies with Latin or classical studies with ancient Greek. Just to note, a student cannot do both. They do one or the other. I'm just going to take number five and number eight together. As I've said previously, you can talk about doing a core MFL, modern foreign language. But here is an opportunity if your son is it likes languages and is particularly linguistic if he would like to study a second language. So in this we have French and Spanish on offer. So if he has picked French as his core and he would like to do Spanish, he can pick Spanish as a second. If he's picked German as a core, he can pick either of them, etc. Number six is home economics and again um, a re relatively new uh, state of the art food lab home economics will bring the boys not only just cooking but certainly cooking um, but also about kitchen practice home practice family budgets um, again it's a it's a relatively new subject in Belvedere College but one that's very popular and then finally to talk about music last September and um, as sorry Mr Bryce mentioned there's lots of co-curricular avenues for for music and the, the fantastic musical talent that we have in the school and um, but the curricular music is also a very large department last September we were delighted to open a brand new um, Temple Street building with absolute state of the art second to none musical and drama facilities and um, that our music students are currently enjoying. So when it comes to the form, there's sorry, there's eight subjects there and your son will study two of those eight. When it comes to the form, he will be asked to one by one, very similarly with the MFL, to rank his first four options and we will guarantee two of the four options and we will do our best to give him the number one and number two. Uh, we may have to go for number three. The last subject that your son will um, study is a short course. So a short course is designed to take up approximately half of the time that a normal subject would. And he will study one of the following seven short courses. We have artistic performance, which is linked in with um, our drama department very heavily and it in invites students to express themselves creatively via acting, singing, performing, miming, writing, creating, directing um, and they do have small performances at the end of second year and third year. We have ceramics which is an annex of the uh, art department focusing on, on clay modeling. We have Chinese again if there's a, a further interest in languages. We have climate action, which overlaps with our science curriculum and our geography curriculum. We have coding again in a state of the art computer lab. We have philosophy, another subject that's linked well with the, the Jesuit ethos and um, our, our classical studies. And then we have urban farm and our urban farm is linked with our science department. But again, urban farm spans the roof of that brand new uh, Temple Street building I mentioned earlier and another state of the art brand new facility that we have. So once again, you choose you choose these in order of preference. You will be invited to um, list three of these seven and we will do our best to give well, we will give one of the one of the one of the first three. Uh, we will do our best to give everyone their first choice. But as I mentioned earlier, that may not be possible. 
The last thing I'm going to talk to you about is about additional educational needs, AEN, uh, formerly called SEN or formerly called remedial education. Um, and we basically ask you here in the forum to let us know if your son has gotten any supports or if you have any uh, concerns that your son may need support in any area of his learning. And um, it is very important that you tell us anything and everything if there's any supports that he received in sec in primary school and um, to note we have no mean we have no streaming in first year in any subject and uh, they are all mixed abilities there is an extensive support structure there for anyone who will need it uh, and if your son falls into the category of requiring additional educational needs the the AEN coordinator will be in touch with you um very early in the year that's everything from me. Um, if you've, as I said, if you have any further questions, you can contact me via email, but I'll hand you back over now to Mr. Bryce. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Carey. We're nearly there at the end of the presentation, and I suppose I should have said this at the start, we would love to have, to have had you in, um, in person here um, in the college, but as you've seen all over the country, we have had an uptake in, uh, in COVID infection and flu, and we thought gathering 400 people together might, um, might not be the best idea. But we really look forward to seeing you as students and you uh, as parents in the induction week when we'll all come together to talk about some of these things and, and give you a bit more of a flavour of the college. I'm just going to talk very quickly about what Mr. Kerry said on um, additional educational needs and forms. It's really important that there are any reports um, uh, for any learning difficulties or additional needs that they come into the college um, address for the attention of Val Hamilton um, by by August. And if over the next six years a report is sought from from any professional inside the college that we that we have that in school to put those recommendations into place. It's really important for us. I'm going to talk very quickly. Last couple of slides um, about technology and communication. Um, as many of you will know, we are an iPad college. Um, we went on this journey nine years ago and um, we use them extensively throughout the six years. We really value our technology. In particular, we really value the, um, the use of Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Platform. It's a dual talk that you're on. So every class will have a Teams group where work is shared, PowerPoints are shared. Um, we use OneNote, Microsoft Forms, Microsoft Sway, and we are fully embedded in the Microsoft family. So one of the main ways we do this is through our iPad. So all the students will purchase an iPad from Riggle, our suppliers, um, before June. Um, and more detail will come out in the email that Yvonne O'Brien has sent out today on how to do that. Um, we use eBooks, and we also, when you buy an eBook, you also get the hard copy. So when you get the the, the hard copy, the ebook code will be in the inside. We don't want our boys coming in from Louds, Dublin, Mead with big heavy bags. So that's why we use the ebook. So we have lockers, we leave some books at home, and we have the iPad. We will publish the book list in the, at the end of May for the year after. And you can buy those books through Riggle, through Bookhaven, which is on the store at Riggle, or in your local bookstore. Um, it is um, getting that iPad set up is very important, but um, it's really important that you um, that you follow the instructions that Riggle will send. They've got a lot of uh, videos, they do webinars, um, and they give really clear instructions how to do this. Um, so it's really important that we um, we do that um, when it comes in in August. In terms of communication, the college is very important. Um, Communication is two ways. We will be in contact with you um, um, with events and with different notifications and the teachers will get in contact with you through the six years uh, of, of your journey as parents. Um, we use email for lengthy or confidential uh, communication. Um, so it's really important when you put the form in and um, fill out Mr. Carey's form for subject options with us get information that it is that is correct. If that changes at all, that's no problem at all. Please let reception know. That's reception at belvedercollege.ie. It's really important that we we have that communication. So our absence texts, our late texts, our any information on school closures, for example, um, that will all go through. Um, that will all go from from reception. And the main platform we use for that um, is Compass. So Compass Education. There's something we moved to uh, three years ago. Um, it's an app. 
okay, as well as a browser um, function. Um, parents download the app. We will give you um, codes to come uh, join it, and all your son's details will be on there. And um, uh, the students can download it too. They can see their timetable. We um, we give first year's timetable in September, but we don't give it the rest of the year. It all goes through Compass, so we write it into our our journals. Then after that, um, we use it for our reports. Um, so after Christmas and summer, when the formal reports go out, they will all be stored on the Compass application. Um, but if you would like to send in a um, an absence request or an absence reason, a late request, um, or someone has to leave early, that will all come through Compass. And there's lots of uh, information on that on our website. We also um, are very active on social media. Um, sharing what's going on in the college. Um, one of our assistant principals, Mr. Duggan, um, he runs that sort of things. And if your son is ever involved in something outside of school over the next six years, please let us know. We'll uh, we'll publicise that. So representing Ireland or wins a big trophy of some sort, we always want to recommend success uh, or um, show our successes. We have a newsletter that's um, very long, but it's very interesting. It goes out by, uh, via Microsoft Sway every second Friday. I'd encourage you to, to have a look at that. You can find it on our website or on social media. Please sign up for our account to see what's going on. Finally, um, just want to talk about communication. Uh, communication in a different way. We know that after eight years um, in primary school, um, there could be some people that you've been in class with the whole time. Um, it could be your best friend, your cousin. They could also be coming to, uh, to the college in September and you could do with a, a break. Um, maybe you want um, your son to come in and to make new friends, not rely on the same friends in primary school, to, um, to, to go out and sort of have a fresh start in Belvedere. It could also be the case as well that some people um, have had a, an issue with, a, with um, another young man in their year group, which is not a problem, um, but just a fresh start after eight years, um, or cousins or twins or something. If any of that is happening, um, that's absolutely fine at all. Um, we, If you send me an email, and my email will be on the um, the, the email of Vaughan O'Brien sent out, it's pbryce at belvederecollege.ie. Please let me know. It'll be treated confidentially, and I will separate people where appropriate. Um, we do this every year. We get a number of requests, and um, there's no reflection on, on anyone. It's a confidential matter, and we will we will keep that um, that will stay between me uh, and the parents, and that will come to the timetable next year. As Mr. Kerry said, um, there's a lot of um, work to be done between now and the 22nd. The deadline for subject choice, and we ask for it early because we are also looking at staffing for next year, and the subject choices um, need to inform our staffing to so how many staffings that I need to to get. It is important that that deadline is met. Um, you'll also see in the uh, email from Yvonne O'Brien, um, a group of students last year went around and filmed a short video for every subject aimed at the at the young men in sixth class coming in so that they can have, see from, from the students' point of view, why they chose home ec or art or urban farm. It's really important that um, you look at that as well if you're looking uh, for, for a, uh, a particular subject. Thank you very much for staying with us for the last um, 50 minutes. Um, so I said we would love to have you in a person. We really look forward to welcoming you um, in person, parents and uh, young men at Camp Belvo and then the formal induction week. Um, if there are any issues at all, please email us. If there's anything you're concerned about, please email us and we will get in contact with you. And um, we are here to help you. Best of luck and I will see you at induction week. Thank you very much. <laughs>